Talcum powder has been linked to ovarian cancer. Find out more at drugsafetynews.com. You know, uh, Kim, after Johnson & Johnson got hit for $72 million on their talc powder case the first time, the, uh, the spokeswoman for Johnson & Johnson, Carol Goodrich, came out and said that the verdict in, that 50, in the $72 million verdict contradicted years of research that supported the safety of the, of, of the talc. Well, now they get hit with another $55 million verdict. And it's not looking like Johnson & Johnson's going to really be able to pull through this without admitting that they did something terribly wrong. Tell us about the last verdict. Uh, what, what's the significance about this from a scientific standpoint? I know you deal with both the science and the, and the legal aspects of this. How do you see this verdict? I see this verdict as a strong message. In both of these verdicts, you're looking at well over $50 million in punitive damages awarded by those juries. Those juries, you know, not just any science gets before the jury. The judge is the gatekeeper, and the judge has reviewed the science, and the juries have spoken. I mean, I think the juries are tired, and the public is tired of being the guinea pig for some of these. And I think Johnson & Johnson and these other manufacturers are going to have to just like you said, they've got to admit that they should have warned. You know, women in general are also being tired. They're, they're tired of being these guinea pigs. And we're seeing it time and time again that the manufacturers are left to police themselves and they don't do it. They look at it as the cost of doing business. Kim, yeah. you've been handling these types of cases a long time, just, gen just generally product defect cases and pharmaceutical kinds of cases. Uh, you're doing interviews on this case with many women that are calling you about this. What are the things that you that you try to analyze when somebody calls in and then say, says, look, I have cancer. I believe it's related to my years and years of use of this talcum powder. What are you looking for when somebody calls in? Uh, what, what is important to you? Look, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because that the first thing is these women, whether they want to pursue a lawsuit or not, they need to get with their doctors and get their records. Doctors and hospitals <clears throat> purge records all the time, and we need to make sure we obtain those records. And, and the, the client needs to, or the potential client needs to, just for their own well-being. Um, some of these cancers, the ovarian cancers, are they're finding the talc when they do the biopsies. Sometimes biopsies were never done, but we've got to have the medical, you know, records to kind of support what's what's going on. Now we've, you just uh, you just said something really important. And that is when they're doing biopsies, these people are presenting with ovarian cancers. And, and mm -hmm. most of the time, uh, you know, most of the time, if it goes untreated, real early catch, it's fatal. And so um, it's a difficult cancer to treat. And so the question is, we know that they used, that, that it's not just them telling us that they've used years and years of, of Johnson baby powder. Right. On pathology, they're actually seeing it in the tissue, the talc in the tissue that, they, that they're putting up on a screen in front. The jury can see it. The scientist or the doctor is saying, well, here's the talc and here's the cancer right around the talc. I mean, it's pretty clear, isn't it? It's, it's very clear, you know, that the studies that we've sort of looked at and I know um, that, that are being presented to these juries show talc being an irritant. It's almost sort of like the asbestos um, epidemic that we saw in the past. Um, it's, it's kind of the same mechanism, I think. What's really interesting about these talc cases, too, when you look at the numbers, you figure 20 thousand plus new ovarian cancer diagnosis every year. Wow. Of those, you've got another 14,000 deaths every year. Now that has been a little bit on the decline, but when you look at 30 years of talc exposure, when they knew, you know, they, they're showing documents to these juries that they knew this stuff was causing cancer for at least 30 years, a 30 to 60 percent increased risk. You're looking at the potential savings. I know that we've sort of analyzed it and, and a lot of attorneys have. If you've got 25 percent of lives caused by these talc exposures, you're looking at a savings of a half a million women of no diagnosis if, mm. the, they, if they put this warning on 30 years ago when they should have, and another 100,000 plus of lives saved if the manufacturer had just done, they didn't, they didn't need this product. They had other products they were Kim, selling. Kim, you raised another thing, and I want to talk about the fact they absolutely did not need this product. There's no right. question. They branded this product. 
they felt like they had the brand out there, so they had to stay with the brand. They were making so much money on it. At the same time they were making all this money, Kim, though, you point out that the documents show they had every reason to understand that this had the potential to cause cancer, didn't they? They sure did. In 1999, the American Cancer Institute even said, you know what, we see a link here, and we think you should no longer use talcum-based uh, powders. Maybe you should swap to, you know, one of the other uh, powders that sort of do a lot of the same issues that talc would. But it's not the, the American Cancer to, uh, Institute's responsibility, it's the manufacturers, to warn these women, and they didn't do it. Well, here's an interesting thing. We see this, uh, you've seen this so many times in some of the cases you've handled over the years, and I know uh, I see it too, and that is once a company comes and they, they spend billions of dollars branding their product, uh, you know, this is Johnson & Johnson's baby powder talc. This is what you need to use. Put it all over your body for a hygiene. If you're adult, put it all over your baby. Everything's fine. Right. They brand this like it's great. And so they don't want to do anything to pull it off the market, even though they know that it's causing physical injury. Right. They don't want to do anything because they're so committed to that brand. That's right. And they've made so many billions of dollars off that brand for decades now. So it's chickens come home to roost for Johnson and Johnson the way I see it. Kim, do you do you have another take on it? No, I, I definitely think that it has. They've got several more trials set this year. Um, I just really think Johnson and Johnson at some point needs to admit to the public their wrongdoing. Um, you know, and just there's just not enough that can be said about the litigation and the legal field. And, and the communities coming together to put a stop to the manufacturers taking advantage of the public. And I think that they are sending that message loud and clear. They're one of the clearest we've seen in a long time. Yeah, well, you know, the, the point is this. The point is what we see these companies do many times is they calculate how many people will die using this product. In other words, we can project maybe as you maybe it's a, a thousand women a year will die using this product from cancer directly re related to the talc exposure yeah. so uh, w w then they calculate how much money are we making on this every year then they calculate how much is each one of those lives worth every year and they conclude well if we're making a billion dollars we can afford to pay out 200 million dollars in losses uh, in court. And we see that time and time again. And I almost have to wonder in this case, is that what they've done? One thing for sure, you, you see a case like this develop. And once you start seeing the beginning of it, it always gets worse. Isn't that your experience? I, I absolutely think that that is true. Not only for the plaintiffs, but you've got to consider too, you know, I think one of the other things they calculate, not only the cost of that, but how many of these people are going to die off that they're not going to have to deal with? How oh. many of these people are going to have their statutes of limitations to the extent that you've got some, you know, state that's got a, you know, something that they can't get past? So I think that they calculate all of that stuff into their evaluation of do we try to brand something that's safe? Do we actually update our warning and lose some of these sales? It's really sickening uh, to see the crassness of these manufacturers when they take into consideration taking away the person's life, taking away the person's ability to even have any recourse. And I think the fact that those two aspects are even considered in yeah, pushing in other words, these products Kim, is horrible. If they've already made $100 billion in all these decades selling it, they it's a cost of doing business. They mm -hmm. say, well, we can pay out $2 billion and we can kill X number of people and we've still come out ahead on this. And what your position is on this and from the beginning has been they need to put a warning on this product. If not, take it off the market right. because of the fact it's not even necessary. They have, they have powders that don't even have this talc that don't kill you by way of ovarian cancer. Sure. Kim, uh, as usual, I've watched you handle, you know, big, big cases. This is certainly a big one. And I appreciate you showing up here. And, and I, I hope you'll continue to get this story out there, okay? Will do. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kim.